Empire. They're in the gate. Need a little help figuring out who to back? And giving people the ability to think about those attributes in a very simple click format um, gives them a chance to really understand statistically what that, that force should do in that race. That's Paul Williams, CEO of First Technology, where educating the modern better on horse racing is a new frontier. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. I work with America's Best Racing, producing programming like the Winter Circle podcast and other horse racing content. It's total love of the game, having learned to read a racing form before I could throw a ball. I also know that younger fans wouldn't actually buy paper, let alone take the time to understand the intricacies of handicapping these days. So one of the ongoing debates in our circle is always, how do we make this incredible experience more accessible? The Strata Group, owners of major tracks in North America, are looking at live experience and at the same time have charged Paul Williams with closing an educational gap to allow bettors to be more informed. Our guest this week is Paul Williams, who is the CEO of First Technology, which is in the horse race gambling realm, aligned with the Stronic Group. And we'll get to all of those different topics and the alignments there in a moment. But Paul, first, you're in lovely Florida on the Derby Trail. Life is actually probably pretty good or as good as it can be in a pandemic for you, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad down here, right? At least you've got the sunshine as opposed to the cold weather. So, um, And look, the track's got restricted occupancy because the governor allowed us to have some. So we can still get some of our fans based back at the operation, but um, yeah, can't beat the weather this time of year. No. Um, So we're having you on partially because clearly there's a huge proliferation of sports gambling that is happening and horse racing has been legalized in most, if not all of the jurisdictions we're talking about for uh, decades now, but there appears to be at least on your end, a pursuit to up the technology. So through what first is and what its goal is with horse race betters. Yeah, of course, we'd love to. So, you know, first came out of our rebrand. Obviously, the Stronic Group decided to rebrand and get more relevant. And you can see, obviously, 1ST is a play on Stronic Group and all of the connotations that you expect in gambling. So it's a very good uh, name for us. Um, And we decided that we needed to enrich the on-track experience um, for the newbie and getting like a new demographic into our sport, particularly with with sports wagering rolling across America. So first, um, there's a combination of of, of many factors, but the the three three main pillar stones, if you like, are one, the experience. We obviously, you can book some of your ticketing and some of our events around our properties on the the app. Um, Two, it's a more modern and slick interface for a newbie to get into the uh, the horse racing gambling um, world. And then three, which is the thing we're most proud of, is it's got automated... Uh, handicapping built into it and the idea being so that as a newbie you you obviously have to get used to the lexicon or all of the connotations and names in our sport Um, a lot of people that don't know our sport obviously don't know what win place on show is versus first second or third Um, so the other part then of obviously knowing the attribution and knowing that because it's the paramutual wagering world you're not actually betting against the house you're betting against the competency of your fellow players that we felt if we gave the newbie an app that allowed it to get their competency up to street smarts pretty quickly, um, they fall into love with a sport like we do. You know, it, it's so interesting because I, I grew up um, in it as my father was a huge, huge horse race enthusiast. He taught me how to read a form before he taught me how to throw a ball. I, you know, curtain mm-hmm. up, do work with America's Best Racing and host shows. So I am fully ingrained and in, in love horse racing. And this conversation comes up every year. You don't need to teach me how to handicap. But if I take anyone who's never been to the sport before and then I'm say, well, who do you like outside of the name and the color of the horse or whatever it may be? Um, I have to throw this mountain of data at them and say, go ahead and pick this. And that educational gap is something I guess that you guys are really trying to bridge here. Yeah, absolutely. Look, and, and we see it in our customer base, anyone that gets past three months 
of the customer uh, generally stays with us right forever because I think that's the, the path to proficiency if you like or the barrier of entry is once you've learned how to handicap you know and you're good maybe you're you've got an angle or you're good at how you think about it and our tool definitely helps you do that. Um, you, you do, you fall in love with the ability to gamble. And, you know, at its core, there's obviously, you know, millions and millions to hundreds of millions of attribution in our algorithmic angles that we're producing for you, but they're boiling down to, you know, what are the factors that you think are important in a horse race? Is it the performance of historically of the horse? Is it historically the performance of the jockey, the trainer? Is it the surface? Is it the length of the race um, or is it more the top speed of the athlete? Um, is it the top speed over a longer period, you know, and, and giving people the ability to, oh, excuse me, think about those attributes in a very simple click format um, gives them the chance to really understand statistically what that, that horse should do in that race. And then you can compare that to the odds that are in the parametral pools at that time and determine if you think there's value there. Um, is this meant for the intermediate gambler as well? And I would classify myself there. I'm certainly not a professional, but I've saved my first rodeo with it. And so I know what I like and what I want to use. Would this simplify the methodology that I would use? So, so I think the obviously answer there is, is a definite yes. We, we build it in a way where you can compound as many different types of attribution or thoughts that you have around what you think is important to a race, or you can just simply do one. You could simply just say, I want to follow the historical performance of the horse, and that's the thing I really care about. Or as you progress through the sport up to, you know, we have other products. Our BetMix product is very much a very sophisticated handicapping tool and looking at the real-time market. It's almost... Um, like a day trading tool. This tool sits, sits in that evolution between, okay, I'm starting to learn now how to, to wager on horses to, you know what, I'm getting pretty good. And I can see you know things that are important to me. You can layer up to, I think it's 15 different factors in our app. We get we ask the newbie to pick two, three to five, um, but you can go up to like 15 different attributions and we will give you the statistical probability, historically what those attributions have done to the winners of the race. And then you can apply that to the market conditions and determine where you think you want to place your wager. Um, so tell me a little bit about the alignment with, with Stronic. And I, and I know uh, uh, that their goals are to uh, enhance the race day experience. And for those who don't know, the Stronic Group owns a few of the most major racetracks in, in North America, including Santa Anita, Gulfstream, and Pimlico, where the Preakness um, is raced annually. Um, could you talk about this alignment that you had referred to earlier where you're using this technology to help bridge a gap for people who may not understand the sport that well and, and want to you know, be introduced to it? And at the same time, there is a race course experience that, that sounds like it's paramount as well. Yeah, look, look, for those of who have, have, have been close to a race day or have gone to one of the big marquee events, they're great days out, right? They're a full day event. There's exciting action every 20 minutes for two minutes. Um, but there's, a, there's an experience there that we want to be on par with any major sports brand in the country, whether you're in a suite at an NFL stadium and enjoying your day or, you know, you're in the pit lane of a NASCAR race, for instance. Um, we think that that day experience, which is everything from food and beverage to uh, the, the, the marquee event, to all of the attributes of the marquee event, like in our world would be the winning, the winner's circle or the paddock so you can get close to the animals. Um, and then all the way through to, and, and we've done it in recent years, is some type of after party, after the main event, so you can carry on enjoying the day. And I think when you combine that with the aspect of getting in the game and having, you know, money or you know a stake on the outcome of the event that you're participating in i think the experience is heightened and we're doing a lot of work around our marquee venues so obviously preakness um second second leg of the triple crown santa anita and Gulfstream to really bring those experiences together and the app is the is the digital complement to those like i said you can book your tickets through those um you can enter into tournaments and things that make those experiences exciting, draws, and you also get the schedule of the day and all the aspects that are offering, wayfinding, all those things that you need at a venue. Um, and it's even your e-ticket. So combining those two allows you to 
you know, do do what millennials love to do, which is really use e-commerce as opposed to physical cash for all of your operations on the day. But the digital experience needs to be physically represented in the type of day that we want you to have when you come to our venues. Support for this podcast comes from Goldman Sachs. What do Goldman Sachs experts and leading thinkers have to say about trends shaping markets, industries, and the global economy? Stay informed with the latest insights from Goldman Sachs on the economic and market implications of COVID-19. Available on our podcasts at gs.com slash COVID-19 or any of your favorite podcast platforms. This may be a little in the weeds, but it's almost because I love the industry and I I actually would love to know the answer to this and and where it's going. Um, Horse racing in general in this country is not fixed odds. Um, there are some venues and I know you're working, I believe with turf paradise where that is happening right now. Um, can you talk about the future of fixed odds in horse racing and whether you think that that is the future for the game itself? Yeah. So I think the industry is largely undecided, right? Um, you know, the, one of the fundamentals about horse racing is it is the only sport in the country that is actually, uh, supported directly by the gaming, the gaming re- revenue. So, you know, for, for a percentage of every bet that's placed in our country on horse racing today goes back into paying the athletes, maintaining the uh, properties and ultimately producing the prize money. Um, obviously fixed odds is how maybe the new generation understands um, wagering because of sports and, and everything we've seen in the last two years is sports has been very complementary to horse racing. Our, our industry has grown on the back of the awareness of sports wagering. It hasn't really been uh, our, our customers have left us for sports. So we definitely believe that there's a good unity uh, around the product set going forward. Um, I think you'll start to see some introduction of very small type wagering um, around fixed odds for horses and they might be, you know, who's future type bets, who's going to win the triple crown this year, um, who might be the most successful jockey this year, like longer term bets. Um, but the beauty of paramutual is you're not really betting against the house. So you're betting yeah. against the competency of other people who are betting on that race. Um, and depending on your knowledge versus their knowledge is, is how successful you can really be. Um, you just don't get that kind of marketplace in a fixed odds world. Yeah. Um, and of course, you can't really lay large wages in a fixed odds world because if you get successful, weirdly, in fixed odds, um, most bookmakers have, unfortunately have to shut you down <laughs> because they're taking a position against you. Yeah. Um, but we're different. We actually want everyone to be super successful because, again, we, we are paid, we're aligned by the customer success by being paid a little piece of their success. So yeah. I think there's a marriage that's coming. It's just going to take a little while to work it out. And, you know, look, paramutual wagering in this country, like you said, is already in 38 states. You know, sports is crawling there slowly. Um, hopefully by 2024, 2025, we'll be completely there, but it's not quite there yet. So we don't really have to make that decision just yet. We have to feel out our customer appetite and understand our customer knowledge. Um, but there's definitely something more fun about being smarter than your peers yeah. than potentially beating a bookmaker whose sole job is to try and be in business. Right? Uh, that's true. Uh, that said, though, when there's five minutes till post and I bet a horse that he's six to one and somehow at post time he's uh, three to one, there might be nothing more infuriating <laughs> when the race goes off yeah, when that I, happens. A hundred percent. That's the other sign of that. Yeah. And I think again, the more market intelligence that we can give to our customers, the better you'll be able to know that that may be the case and you can change your betting strategy accordingly. Right? Yeah. Um, all right. So you mentioned sports betting too. Um, your building, um, are, are some of the algorithms intended to translate over to potential sports betting partnerships or are they solely really in use for horse race betting? They're in use for horses today, but we obviously, cause we're, you know, ultimately we're a technology. I like to think of first technology, which is the group of stronic assets that really represent the technology, um, products in our ecosystem. We're really a technology a group of assets that happen to do horse racing today. Um, we also actually do do some fixed odds sports wagering for some companies in Australia and some other international markets. So we're pretty well versed in the world. Um, all of the algorithms or the, or the AI that we've built is with a mindset to 
um, understanding the key KPIs within a certain sport or racing, including motor racing, um, and then being able to apply that market intelligence back to the customer so they can make a better informed decision. So definitely a wider thought process there, yeah. Um, in general, the the marriage, if you if you can call it that, of sports betting, because it will be ingrained, and, and I live in Maryland, and Maryland just legalized it, so it's another you know, jurisdiction that's going to incorporate it probably at the Stronic tracks, but we'll see, you know, in, in other places as well, as you kind of look ahead to what that landscape looks like, um, how does horse race betting work alongside sports betting as it becomes more ubiquitous in the United States market? Yeah, look, I think there's lots of good marriages appearing, right? You know, Penn National, largely a casino company and a horse racing harness company, you know, partnered with Barstool to bring sports to its ecosystem. That's a great crossover for our industry. Um, Churchill Downs, obviously, owner of the Kentucky Derby, you know, the largest race in our country, is also got its it just rebranded its Bet America sports betting platform to Twin Spires, which is the name of its horse wagering book. So there's some natural partnerships coming up. And look, I think um, you know, I worked in a sports book in Nevada for for a long time back in the early, you know, 2009 to 2015 period. And, and what we found out from our learnings in Nevada when it was the only place you could bet sports is, look, uh, Americans love to bet on American content. They, they're not that interested, at least today or then, on foreign content. They like their own. It's, they're very proud of their own content. And horse racing is a very good day uh, offering for content because most of our sports, um, with some of the exceptions of baseball, kind of kick off in the afternoon or, or early evenings because of TV rights. Horse racing goes during the day based by time zone. So there's a natural complement of giving customers best ball opportunities leading up to the big leagues in the evenings. And I think, again, coupled with a really good experience, whether you're going to a night race, say, at, at, at the Meadowlands and betting on that and then having a drink maybe in the bar in the nightclub afterwards, or you're coming to a whole day premium event like the Kentucky Derby, Preakness, or Belmont, um, there's a natural fit there, much like a NASCAR race or the Super Bowl or yeah. something. And I think if the quality is there and, and the sequencing and scheduling are there, these two things are very harmonious to a, to a consumer. And again, I, I know I, I harp on that a little bit. I, I think there is interest in, much like fantasy, being able to outplay other players not necessarily corporation. Okay. Um, last thing. Um, and since we kind of started this conversation and the purpose of the technology mainly is to help people who are new to the sport, have a better understanding of it and be engaged in it. Um, I'm sure you asked people who might be interested, but don't have experience with horse race gambling. What do they want? So when you ask that question, what does the modern young fan want to get engaged through an app like yours or at a day at the track? That's a great question. Um, I would say, look, all of our research, although the net result seems pretty obvious, is around these things. Engagement is key. You know, look, young people love affirmation. They like to be able to broadcast in, in their social circles uh, their successes. And I think, again, playing against a house versus playing against a group of people, both friends and foes, creates great competition. So I think that collaboration and that affirmation around, you know, I just bet race three horse number four at Gulfstream and it went off at six to one and uh, I did really well on it. Or I've hit a trifecta that paid over, you know, 50 to one. Um, they're great stories and they come to thick and fast in our industry because our race is only two minutes long. So you have an opportunity to correct your ship uh, every every two minutes. Um, so I think that's key. Second one is like getting this barrier of entry down, right? Like getting the ability to understand our sport, um, I think is, is paramount. Like again, the, the sports betting is actually going to have some of the same issue. No one really understands the spread or money line when you initially get into sports is a bit, a bit crazy, but everybody can kind of wrap their head around what action was. So, um, so that's a good benefit. We've just got to get the terms of our sport aligned to the larger masses. And then number number three is people want a quality experience, right? Like, you know, again, I think when people think of a, a, a horse track, they think of a dusty, decrepit building that is on a large piece of land that no one ever goes to or has a very old monolithic casino in it. Yeah. And I think... A lot of our new fan bases that attend 
Pegasus, for instance, which yep. is one of the best parties I've ever been to, and I've lived in Vegas for three years, yep. um, is is a completely different offering to what they're expecting. And I think as we start to build out uh, more understanding and viewership of that experience, I think people can actually have a really fun day at a racetrack. And that's whether you gamble or not. I think the quality that Stronach is, is bringing to those day experiences is going to stand up in its own right and racing is just going to put it on fire. Yeah, I, 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 I've been preaching this forever as a huge horse race enthusiast. Just go. It's not what you think. And once you go to one of these main tracks, that, like the ones that you mentioned, especially on a big day, you'll be hooked. You'll realize exactly. that the it, it's a it's an incredible sporting experience um, that you have to that you have to experience live, and it's it it can be an incredible day. Uh, Paul Williams is the CEO of One ST Technology. Thank you so much for joining us. Perfect. Thank you, guys. At the time of this taping, this weekend's Kentucky Derby may be the most attractive field in terms of betting ever. Three quarters of the field. Coming in had morning line odds that were double digit or better. On the next Future Sport podcast, like horse racing, collectibles have hit a renaissance. They've done an incredible job marketing this, getting players involved. I mean, the fact that I'm going on social media, seeing the Josh Hart of the world. I mean, I was on a flight the other week as an ESPN, you know, watching ESPN on the, the little screen and. It was about Top Shop for 20, you know, 15 minute segment. I mean, it's incredible the hmm. way that they've been able to kind of make this appeal to a mass audience. That's Evan Vandenberg, CEO and co founder of Dibs, a marketplace that encourages fractional ownership of memorabilia. And that will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3Advance, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3Advance.com. That's the number 3Advance.com.